It's Holy Saturday. Good Friday ended. I wonder what those disciples must have been thinking as it got to 12.01. Jesus had breathed his last. He exclaims this like three words, it is finished. And then he's gone. No more breath. The guy who brought back Lazarus is gone. The guy who healed is gone. The guy who fed thousands is gone. The guy who, who told us to leave the family business and follow him, gone. Like we, 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 we followed this guy. I wonder if they like ever found themselves going, what now? And I, I wonder if like all of this fear started coming over then like they killed him. Like power, evil, killed him. And they know that we were with him. So what does that mean for me? What does that mean for us? There was something, just something about him though. There was something about the way he taught. There was something about the way he lived. There was something about what he said and proclaimed and the way he made people feel. And it's gone. It's gone. I don't know what's next. I mean, if you start thinking about this from those disciples' perspective, Saturday was a day of sorrow. Saturday was a day filled with unmet expectations. Saturday was a day of profound fear of the unknown. Saturday was like, what now? I heard once from a mentor that when God hears our prayers, his answers are typically yes, no, or not yet. Saturday is the ultimate not yet. It feels dark. It feels like the kind of mourning, sadness, uncertainty, fear of what is to come because there's no control in the not yet. It's just this wondering, has God forsaken us? And so often, so often I heard a mentor once say, we misconstrue God's silence and we think he's absent when he's just doing some stuff in the night yet. It's so easy for us to go from Good Friday and rush to Easter. But that's not how life works. There's always even in, in the Hebrew scriptures of the Egyptian story of the, the Hebrew be, people being stuck in slavery. And then they get freed from slavery. They don't just go straight to the promised land. They go to the desert where I'm at right now. In like absolute unknown. And especially in times where those disciples are probably wondering, do we need to run for our lives and leave? But here's the truth. The story of formation is a story of death, burial, and resurrection. The story is a story of Egypt, the desert, and the promised land. The story is a story of Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and then Resurrection Sunday. And I imagine for all of us, there are things 
that we struggle on how to handle the not yet. Even with all of this COVID-19, some of the language I've been hearing is delayed grief. We've just had time. And in the time we have just felt things, felt the loss of a loved one, felt the breakdown of a relationship, felt the kind of burn that some body maybe said or did or betrayed or abandoned or neglected us. And that's what Saturday really is. Saturday is the sense of like, God, are you still here? Saturday is God, where are you? Like literally the cry is, where's God in all of this? And we know where it goes tomorrow. We know Easter's coming, but you got to put yourself back with those first disciples and you got to put yourself with the women. You got to put yourself with those first followers who were just all wondering, going, we thought this guy was going to set us free and he's now dead. What does that mean for us? And God, in the ultimate not yet, in the ultimate moment of profound waiting, invites us to trust. To trust him in the not yet, to trust him in the waiting, to trust him in the unknown. And all I can think about is how, when you can go in that journey, you can trust in that time of difficulty. You can feel the delayed grief. You can feel the mourning. You can feel the sadness. All I know is when you go through that and then the sun rises and the new mercies come and resurrection does happen, whew, something, something new gets birth within you. It's more fortitude, it's more trust, it's more resilience, it's more dependency on God. The not yet, welcome to Holy Saturday. Experience it, feel it, surrender it, name it, give it to him. Because we know he can handle it. And we know that Easter's coming.